Welcome back to the Lost Cause Ranch. I'm Joe. And as you can see right here, this is a Chevy LS motor. That means we are back on that Discovery 2 swap. Today's video, we're going to take this LM4 5.3 out of a GMC Envoy and get it all prepped and ready to go in this Discovery. So we have a 2004 Land Rover Discovery that is getting a 5.3 liter GM V8 swap. We are using a conversion kit from Alternative Conversion Engineering and today's video is going to be on getting this all prepped and ready to drop in that Land Rover. So we're going to get the front drive all set up. The conversion comes with the brackets to use the factory Land Rover compressor, alternator, and power steering pump, which is nice. And the neat thing about this conversion kit is it uses the factory Land Rover transmission. So we should have everything integrated well. The traction control, ABS, hill descent, all that should function as it is supposed to do. So with that being said, Ted already stripped this down, got our Summit Racing manifold swapped over, got everything cleaned up. We're gonna get going. And the first thing is, oil pan. We're gonna flip this guy over and get our F-body muscle car oil pan swapped on. You gotta take all the bolts out. So the new kit comes with a different windage tray and pickup, so we'll have to get these swapped out as well. All right, so here is our F-body oil pan kit. Being we have the LM4 that came out of an all-wheel drive vehicle, it's got a drive shaft that goes through it, so we need to switch over to this. This kit came off eBay, comes with bolts, dipstick, some sealant, dipstick tube, new pickup since the sump is in a different location, and the new windage tray. So the only issue with this guy is, being this is an LM4, which is the all aluminum block, the oil pan had the dipstick tube on the factory setup. So we have to drill a hole in the block right there to accept the new dipstick tube. That's not that big a deal, right? Drilling a hole in the block. So oil pan is on, dipstick hole drilled and in. Now we're gonna move on to the front accessories. We have the alternative conversion adapter brackets laid out here. We put some tape on it just so we can reference it. So these will go on up front. This particular one Looks like we're gonna have to clearance. We marked it with a Sharpie there a little bit to clear the water pump. And then in his instructions, he has you getting rid of those two ears off the water pump to clear everything on the passenger side. So what we're gonna do is yank the water pump off, get these cut off, cleaned up. We'll clearance this little corner just a little bit, we'll take her to the belt grinder. We'll get these bolted on. Crank pulley as well. 
the one sent with the kit has a tone ring on it along with an adapter. So we will bolt up the factory Land Rover crank sensor up front. So that way we still have tack and everything working on the factory cluster. And on the instruction side of things, they do have a fairly decent write up on everything that needs to be done, including the wiring. So some of the accessory holes on the cylinder heads are not used on the GM variety. So we're just gonna run a tap through all of them so we can bolt them up. All right, so we have the nubs clearanced off the water pump and chamfered that a little bit. So that should fit. And now we'll just bolt this guy on. So on the factory alternator bracket, you're gonna use these two and that one. Top two, nut and bolt. This third one bolts through into the cylinder head. And that means this guy hits the water pump. So that's gotta go bye-bye. Ted's over there cutting down the alternator bracket right now. So we'll get moving on the AC and power steering pump side. And this bracket's gonna go like so. And we're just gonna finger tight this guy in for now. So the factory idler pulley, GM, the factory one for this engine gets moved from this side. It was where those two tabs were that we cut off over to the opposite side but that leaves more clearancing. This is in the way as well. So below these two top bolts, we'll slice that guy off. Just like that, Ted's got the Land Rover alternator bracket. Little wing cut off at the bottom. So we'll get this guy bolted into place. So the freshly clearanced idler pulley. It comes with some included spacers that get it out far enough to run with the rest of the belt drive. Ted is currently pulling the power steering pump from the Land Rover. So we'll get back to this in just a moment. And this is a little more, one of the more intricate pieces of the front end swap, the power steering pump setup. So we'll do that in just a second. Right now we're gonna pull the front crank pulley off so we can get the new one that comes with the tone wheel on the back. And then we'll attach this provided bracket for the crank position sensor out of the Land Rover onto the side of the engine here. Before we do that, just for aesthetic purposes, nothing really wrong with this one, but we're just gonna round some of the corners off just so it appears a little nicer. So while we got the crank pulley off, we're gonna do the front crank seal just because it would be kind of ill-advised to not do it while you're in there. So we got our crank position sensor, the Land Rover one, that's gonna go off the front here. And it bolts to this side, and one of the front cover bolts comes out. And it sits like so. So we're gonna get that guy bolted in, and then what we need to do is, comes with a stack of washers, washers, and we need to clearance a crank sensor against the tone wheel, tone ring, whatever you call it. 
and it needs to be set at 16 thousandths. So pretty tight. So ours was three washers and a tweak with the pry bar to clearance it correctly. Gonna spin it around, make sure nothing hits. All right, so here is the power steering pump and bracket. AC compressor sits up here. This is all the Land Rover bits. Um, we got the spacer installed. And what's gonna go on here is this is gonna slide in and instead of using the factory three holes, it's going to drop down with this spacer. Rearrange that like so. Bolt in through there. Then we'll use the factory bolt there. And another factory bolt on this side. So we'll tighten all those up and then what we got to do is once this is all located we have to drill a hole that'll go through the bracket on the back side and then we'll use the other supplied bolt and nut along with this little square washer he made up and that should be it for the power steering bracket and we can throw it on the engine. So we got the little sub assembly ready to bolt on. So now we're ready to throw this guy on. It's got two, that nut and bolt, the top two here. And then it's got a threaded insert on the one. So we'll do that one first to get it held up. Oh, oh, almost forgot. We have another spacer plate that sits like so. So this is the drive-by cable throttle body. This one had a drive-by wire. It had an additional little coolant elbow. So we pulled that off, tapped it for eighth inch NPT, and we will plug that. Um, it has the coolant passage through the manifold on this one. Uh, it's not coolant. There. I was just corrected. It's the crankcase vent, not coolant. So. Shows you how much I know. Power steering pump is in place, AC compressor on there. There's the back side of the bracket. So now we just have to get the engine mounts on there. And then this is all ready to go. All right, so we are down to just the engine mount plates. These guys have a couple carriage bolts. that will drop in behind before we bolt them up. And then that is all set to go. So there is our completed LM4 ready to drop in to the Discovery. We have our front drive all in place. Everything clearanced, everything bolted up. We just need to get the belt installed but we'll do that once the engine is in. Other than that, we just need spark plug wires. We got our Summit Racing manifolds. We have our F-body oil pan. Once we pick it off with the forklift, we will install the flex plate and spacer. And then this guy will go in to the Discovery. So as you can see, the engine is just about ready to come out of the Discovery. So next week's video, will be engine out. We aren't gonna spend a whole lot of time on that. Alternative conversion in their manual does go in a little more in depth on pulling the engine, but kind of think if you're tackling this, you're able to remove an engine from it. So next video, we will pull this, get our LM4 set in there, but make sure to stick around for next week's video so you can see what this interesting yellow bracket is for on this swap. I was wondering why it was yellow, but now I understand.
But either way, appreciate you guys watching. If you found this informative or entertaining, make sure to give us a like down below. And any questions, comment. And let me know if you have your own conversion done, how you like it so far. Um, as always, make sure to subscribe for future Land Rover videos. We also play with the Touareg and some other goofy things, so don't miss out on that. Appreciate every one of you watching. Appreciate all the subscribers. This has been fun. But with that, have a good night. And next week, we should have an LS swapped Discovery. Maybe not running just yet, but we will catch you on the next one. So there is our completed L. Oh, I just broke that. Dang. Welcome back to the WASC. Wow, it's a lot cleaner here. Isn't it?